So let's talk about the value statements here of data center. What's your customer think of the data center? Ooh, I like that word. Is this complex? Man, have we, it used to be simpler. <laughs> Before all this stuff, it was simpler. But guess what? Uh, it's, uh, is there a lot of value in virtualization for this customer? Have they been really focused? If you think about our AMs in the field and everything, this, is the this has been the low-hanging fruit for several years. Why? Because only somebody who's stupid wouldn't want to do it. Because we've been growing. With, this, there's so many cost savings here. It's crazy. It's incredible the cost savings that you can have. So it's been an area of focus. That's why Cisco saw it. That's why everybody else has been doing it, but it really is a very, very big focus area. Low-hanging fruit's about gone, folks. <laughs> Low-hanging fruit's about gone. But I think uh, uh, it's allowed business to be more adaptable. It's allowed them to actually roll out applications, what used to take them weeks to do can be rolled out in days or less. There's a, I mean, it has changed the business proposition of how fast I can go to market. Is that important to business leaders? That's critical today. Because guess what? It used to be, if you think about it, uh, anybody remember when Coca-Cola came out with New Coke? Does anybody remember that? Years and years and years ago, Coca-Cola decided that they were going to move away from their original formula and come up with a new Coke. And it flopped like no other. Nobody liked it. Nobody wanted it. Nobody would buy it. How long did it take Coke to figure that out and say, we're scrapping that? Yeah, it was like months. It was a matter of months. Could they even survive in today's world like that? How fast can they know about it now? How fast can they know about it now? Very quick. Probably the first time somebody tweeted. <laughs> you hand somebody, say, you got a Twitter account? Here, drink this and let me watch you. Right? Businesses are adapt having to adapt faster. Virtualization actually helps that. It saved them a ton of money. It might have been only a one-time savings for them, but man, it was a lot of money. They're not going to have these price cuts over and over. That budget money's gone, by the way. Once they said, we, we're going to save this much money, we're going to spend a lot this time, guess what? Next year, that money's not going to be there because we've already fixed it, and it's going to help our business. But it's about the adaptable business. Virtualization gives that to customers. It actually has opened up the cloud. Where's the cloud at? It depends. Hmm. Public. Oh. On premise. Off premise. Yeah. So the cloud description, it means that with virtualization, a customer can say, I'm going to create my own cloud internally, my own private cloud. Yeah. Or I can actually go now have an offering to have a public cloud where people can actually invest in this technology and actually host my applications or whatever it is, services, out there in the cloud. This is the technology that allowed that. It's the only technology that, that would make it work. Or we could have a hybrid in some cases. There might be a hybrid. I think there's going to have to be a hybrid for a long time for certain applications. Virtualization, this, this data center thing, Apps run my business. Apps live in a data center. How important is it? You remember I told you that story about me going, coming out here to California and seeing the MDS 9500 for the first time? And again, I was starting to get enlightened about the importance of applications and all this. 
Let me tell you about my trip back home. Left here, left Cisco here on a Friday. Flew from here, San Jose, to Chicago. Got to Chicago and I was trying to get on an earlier flight back to Raleigh. So I had, had to eat. I was starved to death. You know, they don't feed you on a plane. I hadn't ate anything, so I was starved. And I generally don't eat McDonald's food, but man, I was so hungry it didn't matter what it was. I'd eat my laptop case if, if I thought I could hold it down. So I actually stopped at McDonald's and got a bag of cheeseburger, whatever it is, a quarter pounder of cheese or whatever. And I went and I sat down because I was trying to get on an earlier flight so I could get home because I've been traveling a little bit and my wife was a little bit irate or a lot irate. And so I'm sitting there and this guy comes down and sits down beside me. Now I'm looking down at my bag and I'm looking in there what I got and I see this guy sit down and I could tell his shoes was worth more than my probably my closet because I'm not a snappy dresser and this guy's shoes were nice. Had nice shine on them. They, you could tell they were nice shoes. So I looked up at him, he had a nice suit on and everything, but he had a McDonald's bag too. And we, were, we sat there and I said, man, I hate eating this stuff. And he goes, I do too. He says, it's not good for us. I, I said, but I'm trying to get on a flight and I just, I just hope I do. Where are you from? I'm from Raleigh. Where are you from? I'm from St. Louis. I said, really? That's great. He says, what do you do? I said, I'm a, I work for Cisco Systems. I'm a network engineer for them. He goes, oh, he says, we, we use a lot of their equipment. I said, well, thank you very much. First thing I say to every customer that's ever bought anything from Cisco, thank you for buying Cisco. That's what I did when I was an engineer. Thank you for buying Cisco. I said, well, who do you work for? He said, Keebler. I said, thank you for making those cookies. Keebler's a cookies. They make cookies. And my boat doesn't leave the dock without them. I'm telling you, I love me some Keebler cookies. You're hoping they'll make brownies. Yeah, exactly. Well, no, they can never make brownies good enough for, for me. I mean, they, you know, that's mass produced. But those cookies are good. I said, thank you. I said, I love your products too. I love those, those cookies. He says, well, thank you. I said, I said, well, what do you do there? He says, I'm the CIO. I said, ooh. No, now I know where the shoes came from. Yeah. I said, well, I said, yeah, I said, I'm coming back from San Jose, and I just, I said, I'm a networking guy, routing switch guy and everything. And I said, I'm really getting opened up into this data center world and how important applications are into, into it. And he goes, yeah, he said, I said, because we're actually going to sell a data center switch. I was pitching it to him already. <laughs> I said, it's got some unique capabilities, whatever. And he goes, yeah, he says, data is the most important thing. He says, you know, guess what? He says, if we're without our data for one day, he says, I know I'll never keep my job. He said, I'm gone. He says, an hour of downtime, I'm probably dead. He says, but Keebler as a company, if they're without their data for five days, probably out of business. That's how important data is to these companies. They can't do a thing without it. They can't do a thing without it. It's their heart, their soul, their lungs, their everything of the company. Nobody can do anything without it. Imagine taking all the data away from you. Can't use your computer, can't use your databases, can't use your cell phone, can't use anything like that. Huh? Huh? You can't bill, exactly. You can't bill, you can't do anything. That's why you put it on the phone. Exactly. That's exactly it. So you have to understand, that's how serious this is. Applications run my business, and they do. Max business, that small business, all the way up to the big business. If you told Mac, my friend, he had to give back those applications and go back to putting mail in the, guess what he'd say? I quit, I retire, I start doing something else because I know I can't compete. I can't compete and I don't want to. That's how important data center is to a customer. What has Cisco done here? What has Cisco done here? They have taken the opportunity to innovate here for our own self need. Why do we want to do this? New money, new revenue streams. We found a place where we could make a difference by innovation, by introduce, introducing. And what did it do? A new bubble. A new bubble. The Nexus family of switches. Think of the billion dollars that we're selling. Of, that's new money that we never had a chance to do. Couldn't do that with Catalyst. We had Nexus, absolutely. Gave us a whole new reason, and now we're going to port that Nexus over to the Catalyst for the next generation of Catalyst. So it kind of works out for us pretty good. Absolutely. The servers, again, made Eddie a liar. I've been saying servers are commoditized for years, and now, guess what? Yeah, they were. 
in a traditional world, but when virtualization came out, we want to do something different. And we've done that before. Tomorrow we'll talk about uh, IP telephony and collaboration and everything. We did the exact same thing to Nortel and Avaya. The exact same thing. They could have done IP telephony. Matter of fact, the company that we acquired, Celsius, to get our solution, our communications manager, was actually, uh, at one time, Nortel was going to buy them. And what did Nortel say they were going to do with them? Put them in a trash. You're a, you're a threat to us. Cisco acquired them, and boy, was it a threat. What did it turned out to be a big threat. Cisco saw a market where they could innovate, and we certainly did. Cisco's got the products and solutions to help add on to this virtualization. If virtualization, if this whole data center is a huge one brownie, you know, virtualization is just one chunk of it. We've now added that virtualization to the infrastructure, the multiple data centers that look like one. Cisco's invented, put a lot of R&D in there and innovated with all the technologies in there. Fiber channel over Ethernet, data center Ethernet, OTV, all these different things that we've came up with, which are now becoming standards if they haven't already become standards, to be able to innovate there, right? Absolutely. Uh, this is something Cisco hasn't been that good at, is partnerships. And actually, this is some place where Cisco has partnered pretty well. Yep, yeah, for everybody's need, right? Absolutely. They've had some good partnerships, but they've broken some good partnerships. The partnerships with HP and IBM certainly went down to tubes. Certainly went down to tubes. But we've created new partnerships with EMC and VMware and now Microsoft and uh, SAP and uh, Oracle and all these different solutions, again, that we've got. So Cisco's expanded out, trying to become more important into the customer. Because why is the cut? We want to get closer to the apps. Closer to the apps. So, uh, so that's the data center side. Any questions? Any comments? That's the hardest part to understand and the hardest part for me to teach. Yes, sir. Service and support? Uh, yeah, it could be, yeah. I, I, I'll tell you this. <laughs> I'll tell you. Can I say support? Yes, you can say service and support. Absolutely for our products and everything. Service and support. Again, I'm not going to say that Cisco is a mature vendor who can go in there and do all your applications and everything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think they could now. But they're developing that practice. They're having to. And again, I think we've got some good partners who can. Yes, sir. And, and we provide this as a service, or is it all through our partners' environments? All through our partners. All through our partners. Have we have developed our own data center? Oh, yeah. We've got a world-class data center down in Texas. State-of-the-art, absolutely state-of-the-art data center. Yeah. But we don't provide that as a service? Nope. No. We do not. Why not? Yeah. Day one here. Yeah. You service people are all alike, aren't you? <laughs> You're just looking for more things to sell, aren't you? <laughs> but why not? I mean, I'm with you. You've got the technology, you've got the capabilities. Why not take your world class data center, put your technology in it, sell that as a service to customers so they don't have to manage an industry? Right. Yeah. Put the applications on it. This is, I mean, it's the IBM HP way, and, you know. But, but why not? Right. Yeah. If we take the Australia as an example, and I, I have that mindset. Every service provider I speak to yeah. loves Cisco. Yeah. So that breadth is out there, there's niche players, mm -hmm. we can get really scale. We would rather have our partners do this, buy our equipment and have our partners do this, than us do it. But you gotta look at that world of data center. I mean, what was invested, the amount oh. of and the capabilities that data center rivals the best of them, including IBM, NetApp. Mm -hmm. I've been to all of those data centers mm -hmm. and well, again, I'm going to go back. How much percentage of Cisco's product goes through partners? Do we want to make our partners mad at us? 
<laughs> no. Those are bigger questions for me, a very good question.